For the vast majority of human history, we've used stone tools. Uh, stone has been our medium. So this is really kind of the, the thing that brought us out of the savannas and into space. I mean, you could really tie space travel to the first time someone broke apart a piece of stone. Obsidian will cut through leather. Ooh, and I just cut myself. This is sharper than steel. It's not as strong as steel. It won't hold up to a beating like steel will, but the edge on it is actually sharper than surgical steel. Optometrists use it uh, because it doesn't leave as, as coarse a scar and it actually heals a lot faster because the edge is actually at a micron level. And what I'm doing with the edges is called abrading. And you wanna do this to remove any uh, flakes that are on there kind of softly precariously you want a nice hard surface so when I hit it the force travels into the rock and doesn't just blow up the edge so that was a pretty good one did exactly what I wanted it to do so I hit it right on the edge right here and that force traveled all the way up and actually left the piece it's pretty basic, it's just a wooden dowel. You could use a broom handle or something. A p hollow piece of copper, it's probably about eighth of an inch thick, filled with lead, uh, and then hammered on. So again, it did what I wanted it to do, but I hit it so hard that it actually broke the flake in half. But that's what I'm going for. I wanna take all this nasty outside, we call this cortex, and create that zigzag right here, which you can kind of see starting to form. Because I'm aiming for a really small area, if I, if I overshoot and I hit it in the middle, one of two things is gonna happen. One, nothing. <laughs> I'm just gonna hit the rock. Two, I'm gonna take a flake off that's really big and really deep, and it's gonna make it exceedingly difficult for me to, to do what I wanna do later. So flint napping is kind of like a 3D puzzle, except you're taking it apart instead of putting it together. You don't have a picture and you don't know what it's gonna look like at the end. And this is kind of your textbook zigzag that you're going for. Obviously, as we get further down the line, the zigzags will get tighter and more close together. But this is, for stage one, okay, we can work with this. We're gonna start phase two. I'm gonna switch over from chert to obsidian. So what we're gonna try to do now, you'll notice that it's got two sides. It's a biface. It's a little fat. We're gonna wanna thin that out. But luckily there is a decent midline that we can shoot flakes off of from there. Now one thing I learned through a lot of trial and error is always start at the tip and work your way down. Because if you thin out this and then you try to take flakes off the end, you'll snap it right in half. So I'm using a hand pad. Again, this is a modern tool. A traditional equivalent would be just pieces of, of leather. And they serve the same purpose. The point is to keep your hands safe, but also support the piece itself. In a traditional toolkit, an antler. And then the modern equivalent is uh, a copper, copper nail set into a handle of any variety, sharpened. So that's a nice happy sound. We like that click. That snap means that I got the whole flake to come off in one piece. And that's that's what you're going for. It's not a big deal if they break, but this means that you you got it right on the money. One thing I do when I'm pressure flaking is I use my legs. Your legs are a lot stronger in your upper body. So instead of pushing with my shoulders and trying to use my pecs to squeeze my arms together, I use my legs. It's way easier. So you can see that these flakes are traveling nice and far into the piece, and I'm starting to thin it out a little bit. And you notice I'm flipping it back and forth. That's so I can keep the zigzag line, because if I take all flakes from this side, this midline will start drifting this way. But if I flip it back and forth like that, I get my zigzag. And I'm starting to thin it out a little bit. Now I'm gonna have to fix this edge a touch but we're making good progress thinning this out. We got done with phase two. We got it into the kind of the beginning of where we want to shape it, give it its final form. So I'm going to switch out this piece with something that's a little bit closer to a final finished piece. And I'm going to switch over to my baby tool 
just because it gives me that much more precision. But because it's copper and it's very soft, and I bent it, I broke it. We are going to sharpen this up a little bit and see if we can't make the point a little bit finer. And that'll make it easier to not only get into the notch, but to make a nice narrow notch. That was a good click. Mm. So that took off this whole flake right here. But to actually put the notches in is very easy. Making them look pretty is a whole nother task. So yeah, excuse the blood, but here is a, a finished, usable, side-notched point.